Welcome to this video tutorial on the SPC. The purpose of this tutorial is to explain how the SPC works in IT terms and how to work with the SPC in r 4 bp 3 SPC stands for Summary of Product Characteristics. It stipulates the terms and conditions related to making available on the market and use of the single or biocidal product family. The SPC is an integral part of a number of product-related applications. While you would use a Euclid dossier to submit scientific data, you use the SPC to submit administrative data. Since R4BP3 version 3.2 released in December 2014, a new, differently structured SPC format is mandatory. R4BP3 uses the information submitted in the SPC in order to populate your portfolio with information on cases and assets in R4BP3. Incorrect SPC data can result in invalid assets with negative consequences for the applicant and the authorization holder. Most importantly, the SPC is a public document. ECAS dissemination data will be based on SPC information. That means that the final SPC cannot contain confidential data. In some cases, you might want to submit confidential data in your draft SPC. Please discuss with your evaluating authority which data is considered confidential. Your SPC data is important, so you need to pay particular attention to correctness and completeness. SPC assists for single products and product families. For a single product, one SPC is required per market area or language. For a product family, an overall family SPC is required and an additional SPC for every family member. The family SPC defines the frame conditions which are applicable to all family members, such as the concentration range for the active substance and other substances and the classification. The member SPCs can contain the individual concentrations of the family's active substances and possibly specific individual non-active substances concentrations. My SPC is defined by the unique combination of product name, market, and language. That means for the same legal entity, there cannot be more than one SPC for the same product formulation in the same market area and with the same language. From summer 2015, the SPC editor will be available in all EU languages as well as in Norwegian. You will therefore be able to create SPCs in different languages. The labeling of the different sections in the SPC and the pick list values will be automatically converted to the target language. Here, neither the product name nor the market area changes. For a product authorization, you can create a new language version for an existing SPC. If you want to apply for a mutual recognition in one or several member states, either in parallel or in sequence, you can create versions for new market areas based on uh, existing SPCs. In this case, both the market area and possibly the language may change. The product name does not change. Now I would like to cover the subject of the product name and the trade name. The product name equals to the unique formulation name. The trade name equals to marketing name. A single product or formulation can be marketed with a number of trade names. Reversely, many trade names might refer to a single product or a formulation. A single SPC based on a single product can contain numerous trade names. Alternatively, a number of SPCs based on the same formulation and therefore linked to the same product name can contain different trade names. The same is true for product families. Let's look at this through two examples. In our first example, we have a product 
on a single market in a certain member state under a number of trade names. The reason could be that we want to sell the product via different retailers. In our second example, we decide to market our product in a number of member states via mutual recognition. Now, we need SPCs for the different markets and with the related individual trade names. Again, we can use a lot of different trade names and they will all relate to an identical product formulation. With the release of uh, R4BP 3.2 in December 2014 and the introduction of the new SPC format, the new SPC became a requirement. Since that date, R4BP3 depends on the information contained in the SPC. In order to allow R4BP3 to function and as a transitional measure, all cases and assets that existed in R4BP3 at this point in time were populated with so-called mini SPCs. While this SPC exists in the correct format in many cases, it does not contain complete information. The mini SPC is merely a placeholder. Complete and correct SPC information is needed for many processes that are based on a context authorization asset. For example, in order to renew an authorization or in order to initiate a mutual recognition in sequence, R4BP3 depends on correct SPC data. For that reason, the mini SPC needs to be updated by the applicant. This can be done with the SPC editor. For example, before the applicant starts a renewal case, the applicant needs to download the SPC, open it with the SPC editor and complete it. In R4BP3, it is possible to have several changes on the same asset at the same time. This affects the following change cases for standard and simplified authorizations administrative change on request, minor change, major change, merge of assets, and addition of a new product family member. On the one hand, the possibility to change cases in parallel offers more flexibility to applicants. On the other hand, the overlap of a change requests relating to one and the same asset requires a high degree of awareness from both the applicant and the competent authority. The reason is that whenever a change case is approved, the authorized SPC simply replaces the former SPC in the reference asset. Make sure that any changes applied to a final SPC in the latest approved change case are included in the SPC if you apply for a new change case application. In our simplified example, you can see three change cases and the respective SPCs. As a result of each case, SPC A, the original SPC, is going to be replaced with SPC B. The applicant needs to make sure that the order of approvals is in line with the SPCs submitted because every approval will result in a replacement of the former SPC with a new one Let's look at this example of three change cases, one after another. We assume the cases are approved in the order of application. Having applied for all those changes, we need to make sure that all changes are reflected in the asset. In order to have all changes implemented, the final SPC needs to contain all requested changes. In order to reflect the changes that were applied for in case 1, you need to use the resulting SPC when initiating case 2. The same is true for the third case. In order to reflect the changes that were applied for in cases 1 and 2, you need to use the resulting SPC from case 2 when initiating case 3. The final SPC will only contain the changes that happened if you use the latest SPC for additional applications. Only a correct SPC will modify the asset correctly. For more information on the SPC and the link to different R4BP3 processes, 
please consult technical guides and manuals on the ECA website.